It is that most wonderful time of the year that everybody goes online and treats themselves to some jolly festive Christmas lights. Or indeed, well, these ones are purple, so they'd be perfect for Halloween as well. I'll just throw the box out the way. And once again, this video is here just to say, if you've bought these, don't let pets near them, don't let kids near them. Just be aware that when you buy stuff like this from eBay, you're not getting something that is compliant with local standards, usually. There are genuinely compliant lights on eBay, but, but these are not. Let's get the hobby up and let's do a test. We'll actually get the anti up this time. And we'll check the power consumption of these. Now, these have a different controller. This is good. I shall take this apart. I don't think I've taken one of these controls apart. Usually, it's these ones here. Just a little box with the button on it that uh, defaults to its... Uh, advertising sequence where it goes through all the patterns then you have to click through to get it static every time this one doesn't do that you can set this to static all the time this is a double-edged sword uh, the, these ones also come with the little sort of chinesey american -y type two-pin plug uh, this one actually comes with a uk plug which is good so let's plug it in so when i plug this in uh, it is showing us dim display here the lights aren't showing us flicker in the camera, that's good. 15.5 uh, watts, roughly. 0.9 power factor, that's mainly because it's just resistor dropping the uh, current to the LEDs. And uh, 68 milliamps. Now, this is a 500 LED set. That's an, an interesting thing to know. I want to see how they're wired for that. Now, if I pop this open, let's see, the fuse in it should be a 3 amp fuse. To, because the fuse in British plugs is to protect the wiring. In this case, they've just chosen the biggest fuse, which is a 13 amp fuse. Let's plug it in again without the fuse and see if it lights. Because uh, sometimes it does. It doesn't light without the fuse. This is good. It means the fuse is in the circuit. But the fuse is the wrong one. This is almost certainly a fake fuse as well. Let's um, get a pair of pliers and see if there's sand inside the fuse, which there should be to ensure it breaks in a controlled manner. There is sand. Okay, that's a good start. Okay, that's that's a doubly good start, although a 3 amp fuse would have been preferred. That's a UK thing. We've got very high power uh, available from wall sockets. It's basically, we've got uh, 240 volts at uh, 32 amps, which is the equivalent, well, we can power 8 kilowatts from one, uh, from, well, not from one socket, from the circuit. Typically about 3 kilowatts with a 13 amp fuse. Right, tell you what, uh, before I go any further, I'm going to change the fuse in this. I'm going to put the 3 amp one in. One moment, please. A more appropriate fuse has now been fitted and they're lit in their resplendent purple glow. I should actually show you the listing for these. Uh, mains plug-in Christmas fairy string lights LED Christmas tree wedding party garden and they're available in strings of up to 1000 LEDs. I went for the 500 LED set because I, the, I just wanted to see how it's wired. And uh, typically, well in this case 1659, the price is increasing dramatically because it goes with supply and demand. So what we have here, we've got the controller and it's interesting to note that I've come across these controllers with Basically, the wrapped in cling film or saran wrap, basically the shrink wrappy types of stuff used for protecting food. I think that may be some way of getting around a regulation. Double insulated, perhaps? I'm not really sure. Or to stop covers being popped off because, well, hold on, let's do that test. Sometimes the covers in these are not clipped on well, particularly a little plate at the bottom. Well, it's not clipped on, it's just, it's not fastened anyway. It's very easy to pop off. And when that comes off, it exposes live connections. But um, this is fairly common. I wonder if that's why the other ones were wrapped in cling film. Right, okay, I'll pop that back on. It's interesting to note this one actually has um, a plug-in socket, which is quite unusual. And it's got a common pin, uh, and it's got two switch pins, so it is two-channel. This is a very common style of connector. Unfortunately, it's also shared with low voltage lights. They don't seem to use any keying. I recently received a product that had clearly been plugged into 240 volts when it was designed for 3 volts. So the way this is wired, uh, it'll start off with the common wire goes through, and uh, initially it starts off the three wires. The first wire goes to the first of the channels and then loops out, uh, but also has a series wire looping out, and then it goes to the second one. 
uh, which is the second channel, goes in and two wires come out and you end up with five wires going along. Uh, the common wire, the two control wires and then the sort of series string of LEDs. So at some point this will change back to three core and that's if I count the LEDs and divide by two, that's how many are wired per channel. Uh, in the first few LEDs, there should be resistors. I'm looking for the resistors. I'm not seeing the resistors. They can be sneaked in anywhere. There's one of the resistors. It's a tiny little 8th watt resistor. Let me just um, see if I can read that. Not sure. Red, black, no, brown. I'm not really sure what that is. It's a three three band colour. It could go in our direction. It could be brown, black, red. I shall explore that. It's also worth mentioning that whereas on the other light, the heat shrink is usually super wafer thin. It's actually thicker in these ones. That might be an attempt at extra safety. But it doesn't uh, comply with the requirement for the wires to have strain relief. You can pull these and they usually just snap out, which is bad because then they expose live wires. Right, tell you what, I'm going to explore this uh, string of lights. I'm also going to open this box and we'll take a look at the circuit board inside it and see how it's configured. One moment, please. I am about to do something electrical, so I feel it is prudent to start the camera just in case so I can catch horrible instants where things go wrong. Let's stuff these wires in here and turn the power on. Oh no, the LED's just lit. That's all that happened. 14 watts, nothing exciting happened. Anticlimax, but you know, worth doing. Reverse engineering is complete and with the help of a few alcoholic beverages, the LEDs have all been counted and came up short of 500. A bridge rectifier roughed from four diodes has been added. I shall show you that in a moment. Out the way for these at the moment, let's take a look at the circuit board. So I shall focus down onto that. I shall zoom down onto it and we can explore the components on this fairly stereotypical but quite interesting version of these controllers. We have a bridge rectifier. We have a current limiting resistor for the power supply and a smoothing capacitor power supply. There is a shunt regulator built into the chip itself, which is on a little auxiliary daughter board. We have a phase angle, well, zero crossing point detection resistor, high value, 2 mega ohm. We have two thyristors for switching the two channels. It could switch four, but they've just used two because they're cheap. And uh, we have the rotary selector switch here, which is quite a sophisticated component. It's basically got a slider ring in the middle, and then it's got this outer dimple that just goes round the contacts. And it's actually more sophisticated and expensive looking than I was expecting. That's quite nice. The other side of the circuit board it looks like this. We have the AC coming on here, going to the bridge direct bar straight away, but one leg of the AC is taken to that uh, phase, phase angle and crossing, zero crossing detection resistor. Uh, the output from the bridge direct bar goes straight to the positive output to the LEDs, but it also feeds the power to the circuitry via this 100k resistor, which is going to dissipate quite a bit of heat, over half a watt. And there's the smoothing capacitor for that. There's the switches, there's the little row contacts, the two Thyristors that are used, PCR406, very sensitive, uh, are in a position, this circuit board can take four, but they've just basically left the other two positions blank. It's very cheap and nasty. Let's take a look at their schematic. Here is the schematic. I shall zoom down a little bit further. The AC supply comes in and gets rectified from AC to DC, full wave rectified but unsmoothed. That positive goes out to feed the LEDs, which are a string of alternate LEDs and resistors. And we also have the little supply here, which is a 100k current limiting resistor, the shunt regulator, like a zener inside this chip here, and then the smoothing capacitor, 47 megafarad, 16 volt. I measure the voltage with nothing connected as 3.26 volts. There is this 2 mega ohm resistor, which is tied directly to an AC line that is most likely used to detect the zero crossing point for dimming purposes and timing purposes in the chip. There is the input. Instead of just being a sort of click through the effects type thing, it actually has eight inputs. I've just drawn seven here because I ran out of room. No, tell you what. No, here's the eighth. There we go. There. I didn't run out of room. And there is the... Uh, wiper contact which goes to the zero volt rail which wipes around those to select the pattern you want. Two outputs driving the thyristors directly. PCR406 sensitive 
thigh wristers. And then we have roughly 80 LEDs with just four 1K resistors interspersed with those to limit the current. And if you consider that the 80 LEDs, let me just bring in the calculador here, the kink calculator. We have the 80 LEDs roughly at the low current times 2.5 volts equals 200 volts. The, this is a RMS 240 volt supply here. The Chinese supply is 220 volt. The four 1K resistors, 4, uh, 4K, uh, will typically limit that to about 10 milliamps for the difference in voltage here. And uh, in the case of China, it would be slightly lower, but it's well within the rating, which is quite nice for a change. Uh, there were, in the string, there were two sets of uh, 160 LEDs with uh, two channels, so that was 80 plus 80 LEDs, and then randomly, just 79, 79, giving a total of 470 LEDs. You cheapskates, how dare you con me out of 22 LEDs? But not to worry, it's more or less 500 LEDs. Right, you can drive these LEDs directly in a couple of ways without this controller. If you just want static LEDs, I mean the controller will work for this. You can just use a bridge rectifier feeding LEDs directly because the way they work, they have the LED string is the bulk of the voltage and then they've just got just plain resistors interspersed along those. But the other option you could use is a capacitive dropper. Oh, let me draw that right now for you. The capacitive dropper has the advantage that you could add smoothing to it and limit the current so the LED current is very low and just provides a nice ambient illumination without uh, ex limiting the LED life too much. But although having said that, the LEDs and the resistors are not being pushed too hard, which is nice. So a capacitive dropper would typically be, say, 330 nanofarad. So just a wild guess. Could be 470 nanofarad or higher. It would have a discharge resistor across at one meg ohm, just basically to stop you getting tingle across the two supply pins. That would be going to a bridge rectifier. We would have a capacitor across the output of that. Let me just catch up here. There's the output, there's the output. We'd have capacitor across that to provide a nice smooth DC to avoid any flicker. And we might even have a one meg ohm resistor across there just to avoid peppy incidents. That would be a 400 volt capacitor, typically 4.7 megfarad, is a very popular choice. That would be a 1 meg ohm resistor, and that would go out to LEDs plus and minus. And that would be a nice flicker free supply. Okay, let's take a look at the lights and I'll show you what I actually did, which is basically just the incoming supply going to a bridge rectifier and then going straight to LEDs. So there is a risk of flicker. But you can judge for yourself. I shall power them up and you can see. The bridge rectifier was made from just uh, four discrete diodes. Uh, one N4007s, which are rated 1000 volts. They're my go-to diode. One amp, uh, 1000 volts. And if I bring in a suitably shady power supply here, here's the shady power supply. And I plug it in. I rewired this power supply to make it relatively safe. Oh, things worth mentioning. The cable that came with this is copper-coated aluminium. Let me just uh, focus on a more appropriate position here. Copper-coated... Uh, uh, this Actually, it's copper-coated steel, this particular one. Let me strip the cable. Let me strip it and then do the flame test for you. The flame test is a very useful test to indicate if things are copper or not. Although, having said that, the difficulty in twisting these cores and soldering them kind of suggests they are another metal coated in copper. Now let me zoom down this. And then I shall focus on that. And then I shall hold a naked flame under those. And you'll see they just shrivel away instantly. And sometimes with the copper-coated steel, it also creates little sparks. But in this case, they've just slumped as copper-coated aluminium does. And once it's fizzled out, uh, this has maintained a certain certain flexibility that aluminium would have gone crumbly at that point. They are crap. Don't uh, use those cables. Put them in the recycling container such that they may be restored to useful materials later on. So the power is off at the moment. I'm going to stuff these in here. Well, I hope the power is off. I did rewire it after all. Here's the LEDs. Let's zoom out, uh, focus down on here, and we'll turn it on. 
the LEDs were just like static. Uh, the power consumption is 13.5 watts. Um, and these will, uh, they're not being run at ridiculously high current. Um, the resistors on in series are not being overdriven, which is nice. Uh, some of the sets do overdrive the LEDs. But in summary here, as you turn these off, no, I'm going to leave them on because they're quite nice, even though they're still not safe. In summary, these LEDs, the wire is single insulated. It's not very thick. It's got very thin cores that may or may not be copper. It is no proper string leaf such that if anything gets snagged or pulled, these uh, the wires can get pulled out of the uh, LED housings here, which are just heat shrink, which sometimes perforates and uh, exposes live connectors. And these uh, could potentially leave live wires hanging out. They claim these are suitable for use outdoors. They're really not for a couple of reasons. Um, firstly, water will wick up the end and it poses a shock risk. You can get a shock just by touching them because the water bridges from the live circuitry to the uh, to your fingers, basically. And also, because there's DC across these LEDs at low voltage, water will wick in through capillary action and they will rust inside and very quickly fail. They're not very good for that. So, in a sense, you don't want to use them around pets. You don't want to use them around young kids. You don't want to use them anywhere flammable if it's the ones that uh, have just 100 LEDs because they often overdrive the resistors in them. And uh, ultimately, there you can get better LEDs for not much more. In your local suppliers, like say for instance in America it might be Walmart, in the UK it might be Asda or Tesco, you can get better quality LEDs, usually with a low voltage power supply, that pose much less of a risk than these cheapies from eBay do. And those are the ones you should buy for safety reasons. But having said that, um, if you're living your living on your own and you are putting these lights out of reach and you have a fire extinguisher handy these are probably fine well that's not a good advertisement is it but there we go these are generic chinese leds i really don't recommend them they're interesting they're hackable but they are not safe